the way 2020 has played out so far, I am just itching to go on another backpacking trip. Last month we went down to Red River Gorge, and since then my wife and I have actually had our second child. So I don't expect to be going on another trip for another month or so, but hopefully I can squeeze in some winter backpacking trips at the end of the year. So to fill the void while I haven't been out backpacking, I've bought backpacking gear, because of course, what else are you gonna do? And I do plan on doing some review videos in the next couple months. I'm really excited to test out this gear and let you guys know what I think. So look forward to those soon. So in the last month, I've joined a couple different Facebook groups around backpacking and backpacking gear. And one of the more common questions that I've seen on these forums is around footwear, whether people should be looking into trail runners or hiking boots, some pros and cons of each. And since I have an obsession with backpacking gear, I have a pair of each, actually. I've got a pair of hiking shoes, trail runners, and hiking boots. So I've had the opportunity to test each one of these out in the field on multiple trips, and I thought it'd be a good chance to go through, break down my personal preference, and break down some pros and cons of each type of footwear and what I think of them. So let's get started. interested in the content that I've put out so far, go ahead and subscribe down below. I'd greatly appreciate it. I just started this channel earlier this year because when I first started backpacking, I found myself relying heavily on YouTube videos to figure out what type of backpacking gear I should be looking at, some great ideas on where I could start backpacking, and just some overall general tips and tricks from some more experienced backpackers. So I started this channel to kind of provide the same opportunity and content for people that are just starting to get into backpacking. It was extremely helpful for me, so I'm hoping to provide the same experience and knowledge to other backpackers out there. So again, if you're enjoying the content so far, go ahead and subscribe down below. So one point I do want to bring up before we get too far into the video is the choice in footwear is entirely a personal decision. What works for me may not work for you. So whether you're looking at trail runners or hiking boots, I highly suggest you go out to an outfitter store, actually get fitted, work with an expert to determine which type of footwear is going to work best for you. In this video, I won't be going through which item is the best. I'm simply going through each type of footwear, letting you know what my experience has been with them so far and some pros and cons that I have with each. So with that out of the way, let's go through some tips that I've learned that apply to every type of footwear in this video. So when you're ready to buy your footwear, there's a couple tips that I've picked up in my backpacking experiences so far that'll hopefully help you guys pick out the right type of footwear for you. The first one I learned the hard way from personal experience, I have a little backstory behind it, and that's get fitted by an expert. I highly suggest when you're getting ready to purchase your footwear that you actually go into a retailer or an outfitter and get professionally fitted to make sure that you get the right size. This right here is a Solomon XA Pro 3D Trail Runner, and this has been a pretty awesome trail runner for me so far. This is the first trail runner that I've actually owned, but there's one major issue I've had. I purchased this online and I did not get the right size. On my last solo backpacking trip, I'll post the video right up here, my feet at the end of two days were absolutely killing me. And I actually went on that trip two months ago now and my toe is still black and blue bruised up from that trip what's happening is when i have my hiking socks on and i'm walking my feet are swelling a little bit and they keep hitting the top of the boot so anytime i may kick a root or anything like that my feet were just killing me so i highly recommend that when you're picking out your footwear that you actually go get fitted by a professional so tip number two kind of ties in with the first tip, and that's when you're getting fitted, I highly recommend that you wear the socks you plan on backpacking and hiking with. You don't want to go into the fitting wearing an extremely thin layered sock or super thin cotton socks because you're not going to get an accurate representation of what you're wearing when you're hiking, obviously. So you want to make sure, especially if you're somebody like me that wears like a thick merino wool sock, 
that you wear those socks into the fitting with you so that you get your footwear fitted properly. So last but not least, and that's breaking in your footwear before going on your backpacking trip. The last thing you want to end up with on day two or day three of a backpacking trip is blisters all over your feet or something more serious like tendonitis. So after you purchase your footwear, I highly recommend that you wear them around the house or even go on a couple day hikes to break them in, make sure the fit is right and make sure everything checks out. So now that we've went through the tips, let's get started with the footwear itself, starting with hiking boots. All right, so let's get started with the big bad hiking boot. Now I'm not sure exactly what model this is, but this is a Solomon hiking boot. And this is actually the first piece of footwear I picked up when I started backpacking about three or four years ago. Now what I absolutely love about this hiking boot is the durability. I have put this thing through the ringer and it has just performed great. I've hiked in muddy, rainy, snowy, rocky conditions. I've stumbled on roots, rocks, you name it. This thing has been through it and it has just performed great. The tread on the boot is still in great condition and like I said I've had this for about three maybe four years and I've taken this on a ton of backpacking trips. So overall when it comes to durability hiking boots are really going to be a good option for you. So another thing I really enjoy about hiking boots is their water resistant capability. This boot is made with a Gore-Tex lining on the top so it does a good job preventing water from seeping in through some of these areas that are made of mesh. The high support here also does a good job preventing water from spilling over the top. So if you're doing like a small creek crossing or stepping in puddles or anything like that, it definitely does a good job preventing water from spilling in over the top. And that brings me to my next point, and that's the stability or ankle support. So this does have that higher ankle padding here, and you're also able to tie it off up high, get it nice and tight around your ankle. So if you are somebody who does have ankle issues or you've had ankle injuries in the past, this is definitely a good option for you. The last thing you want to run into when you're out in the backcountry is rolling or twisting your ankle again, re-aggravating some injury. So it's really nice to have that added support and stability for you when you're out on your backpacking trip. Last but not least, hiking boots are a great option when it comes to cold weather or winter backpacking. The extra padding that the boot has, especially around the ankle, does a great job insulating your feet, keeping them nice and warm when those temperatures start dropping. The tread here on the bottom does a great job giving you that added traction that you might need when it starts getting snowy or you're hiking in ice. So if you're hiking you know, on an up or downhill and there's lots of snow, this tread here does a great job of giving you some extra traction. So for those reasons, I do really enjoy hiking boots and those are the four pros that I have with them. Let's move on to the cons. All right, so some of the downfalls with hiking boots are that they are heavier than trail runners or hiking shoes. This one comes in at one pound, five ounces, whereas the other two shoes that I'll show later come in at just 14 ounces. All of that extra padding they use for the stability and durability definitely has its cost and they do typically weigh more. Now with that weight comes extra effort when it comes to actually hiking. I do notice that when I hike with these, my feet just feel a little bit more tired. My lower body's a little bit more drained because I'm having to lug around that extra weight all day. Another issue that I do have with hiking boots is that they dry pretty slow. I did a trip in Pictured Rocks, for instance, and these boots took about two and a half to three days to completely dry out. It took forever. We tried putting hot rocks inside of them, drying them out in the sun. The issue is that there's just so much fabric and material on these that it takes quite a bit of time to actually dry them out. And there's really no way to get inside here to dry out the inside of your boot. So it does take a while to get these dried out if they do get wet. So last but not least when it comes to hiking boots is break-in period. I talked about this earlier, but it's specifically important with hiking boots due to the amount of material used and that extra weight. You really want to make sure that you give ample amount of time breaking in these boots and getting your feet adjusted to them. You really want to do this to avoid getting blisters or having any feet problems when you're out on the trail. So that pretty much wraps it up for hiking boots. Let's move on to hiking shoes next. All right, so on to hiking shoes. This is a Columbia hiking shoe that I picked up about two years ago. And actually it's the first hiking shoe that I've actually ever used. And so far I've been pretty pleased with it. 
Some of the things I really like about hiking shoes are again the durability. The tread on here is nice and thick so it does a great job of getting good traction on the trails when I'm out hiking. This toe here on the front is built out of a really solid material so it does a great job protecting your toes you know when you're out there kicking stumps, roots, rocks, we all do it, but it does a great job of protecting your feet. And last but not least when it comes to durability, the padding on these again is pretty solid. It's not as thick as what you would see in a hiking boot, but it still does a great job keeping my feet comfortable. Another great thing about hiking shoes is their water resistant capability. So I'm not sure what material is used to keep this one water resistant, but this one is labeled as being waterproof. It's done a great job for me in wet conditions so far, keeping my feet nice and dry. I haven't really had to worry about getting my feet wet with these camping shoes. Why do, I keep calling them camping shoes. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, hiking shoes. So last but not least when it comes to hiking shoes is they are definitely lightweight. This one comes in at about 14.7 ounces, I believe, which is significantly lighter than my hiking boots. I can really tell a difference when I get done hiking for a day, you know, maybe 10 miles for instance. I really notice that my lower body, especially my feet, are just not as sore and tired when I'm using these as opposed to my hiking boots. So for those reasons, I do really enjoy these hiking shoes so far. Got it right. All right, so let's move on to the cons. So when it comes to a hiking shoe, a couple downfalls that I do have with it are the lack of ankle support. So again, if you are somebody who has had ankle injuries or issues in the past, this might not be the best solution for you. There's not nearly the ankle support here that the hiking boot will provide you. This is pretty much the same thing you would see on a standard shoe. Another issue with that lack of ankle support is you don't have as much protection when it comes to water. So if you do happen to be hiking in a small creek crossing or stream crossing where the water is high enough to go over the uh, edge here, you are going to get water flowing into your uh, shoe a lot easier than you would with a hiking boot that has a much higher ankle. So those are the two major issues I have with the hiking shoes, but overall I've been pretty pleased with this so far and I'll continue to use this one on some of my trips in the future. So with the hiking shoe and hiking boot out of the way, let's move on to the trail runners. All right, new kids on the block for me and that's trail runners. I just picked these up last year after watching a ton of YouTubers talk about them and so far they've been pretty good for me. I've really enjoyed my experience with them outside of them being sized a little bit small, but that one's on me. So some of the things I really love about trail runners is they again are pretty lightweight. This comes in at about 14 ounces per shoe, which is significantly lighter than the hiking boot. Another great thing about these is they dry out quick. There's not a ton of material on these. There's not much to them. They're pretty flexible, breathable. So when these get wet, they dry out pretty quick. On a trip I went on earlier this year, we had a pretty large creek crossing and I believe these dried out within the next, by the next day they were dried out, which is so much faster than what I had to deal with with the hiking boots. Another nice thing about trail runners is they are also water resistant. Once again, this is a Solomon boot that has the Gore-Tex lining on it. So these do a great job of keeping water out when they get up on the mesh or the top of the shoe here. So they do a great job offering that water resistant capability, keeping your feet dry. Last but not least is comfort. These things are pretty comfortable. When I get done hiking a you know 10 mile day in trail runners, my lower body just does not feel as worn and sore as they would carrying around a heavy hiking boot. Overall comfort has been a really nice feature with these shoes so far. So let's move on to some of the disadvantages with trail runners. So there's really only two major issues I have with trail runners. The first is durability. So you will notice if you own trail runners that you probably have to replace them more frequently than you would a hiking boot. The tread here on the bottom is not nearly as thick and strong as what the hiking boots have. I think these are only usually good for maybe 500 miles is what I've seen online, but I'll have to fact check that. But overall, the durability is just not near what it is with a hiking boot. 
Obviously, they're using less materials. These are lighter weight, so you can't expect the same longevity with a trail runner as a hiking boot. So last but not least, when it comes to downfalls and trail runners, is the lack of ankle support. So trail runners are made to be lightweight and comfortable, and they just can't afford to have the extra weight and stability that is required for that ankle support. So if you're somebody, again, who has had ankle issues or injuries in the past, you may want to consider like a lightweight hiking boot rather than trail runners. Overall, I've been pretty pleased with the trail runners so far though, and I think I'm going to continue using these unless it's like a winter or cold camping trip where I'll bust out the hiking boots. Alright, so that pretty much wraps it up. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know what you guys think. I'd also love to hear back from you guys on what type of footwear you guys are bringing out there in the backcountry with you. Are you guys using trail runners or do you find yourself using hiking boots more often? I think me personally, I'm going to be using all three different types of footwear that I went through in this video, depending on the type of terrain and climate I'm going to be hiking in. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later.